Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Character Creation Guide. In this case, we're checking out all homeworlds for the Rogue Trader. Let's go! Are you ready for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader? As I am. The Emperor protects. home world of your main character, the home world of Rogue Trader, the one you're gonna play with. We got Death World, Voidborn, High World, Forge World, Imperial World, and Fortress World. It depends what you pick, how actives and passives will change along the way on your run. So let's take a closer look out of every single home world. Once the character, and if you decide to go with a death world as your origin home world, this is for characters that prioritize melee combat. Strong, bulky, tanky characters. Okay, whether you wanna make them range bulky or melee bulky, that's up to you, but that's what they prioritize on death world. In other words, you recover a bit of HP, or how they like to call it here, wounds. Wounds is HP. Once you drop below 30, you recover 20, and you can raise armor as well. That's the benefit of a dead world. Also, what you get when you pick that world is talents. Five specific talents. Let's check them out. Brutal Hunter. That world characters gain plus 15% critical hit chance against targets with bleeding effect or with 50% or less of their maximum wounds. Very good, because there's a lot of companions that can bleed enemies, so you're gonna deal more damage, or better say, you're gonna crit more often against bleeding enemies. This is a very good passive. Again, there's plenty of companions that can bleed enemies. Trusty weapons. Death world characters gain 10% to critical hit chance for axes, hammers, and laser weapons. Again, I said, it merges well with characteristic modifiers, or better to say, when you wanna play a big, bulky rogue trader. Alright. Wounded Beast. Every injury increases the Death World character agility and willpower by 5. Every trauma counts as 3 injuries. This is the difficulty talent. The harder the difficulty, the more injuries you'll have, hence the bigger the benefit out of the Wounded Beast. The lower the difficulty, like story or normal, Wounded Beast has literally nothing for you. So this is a good one for hard and for unfair. Hellish life. Death world characters take less damage from flame, toxic and bleeding effects useful. Okay, you are tanky, bulky, you wanna make it as a melee from a death world. Okay, you wanna go in, tank it up. You get more resists so toxic, or flame and bleed. Good, good passive talent. Tenacity. Once per combat, when a Death World character is suffering from the stunned, blinded, or immobilized condition, this condition is ignored, and they instead gain 20% temporary wounds to their maximum wounds. So every time when you're about to get stunned, blinded, or immobilized, enemies do tend to cast blind and stunned, of that I'm sure, I'm not sure about immobilized though. Instead of being stunned, you're gonna get 20% bigger health pool. Very good passive. Again, that world is quite interesting. I like it a lot with all the talents and with characteristic modifiers and with a survival instinct on top of it all and with everything that it brings on a table for a melee bulky rogue trader for a tank. Okay, if you wanna play as tank, you go with a that world home world origin. The next one would be Voidborn. So in short, what is Voidborn? Imagine in Wrath of the Righteous if you would merge Trickster with a Sorcerer or a Wizard. Here you get a Dodgy, okay, someone that can dodge and that can re-roll dices, alright, because of the fortune here. Be nimble and you deal psychic damage to enemies. I better say this is a nimble mage. That's what Voidborn is. Now from the talents we got Bloody Mess. There is a chance, 10% chance, that you're gonna do double damage. Great on a mage, on a psyker. Contagious Luck. Using a non-damaging ability on an ally grants the ally the ability to reroll any failed attack, dodge or parry. 
Using a non-damaging ability on an enemy grants them 20% chance to fail a successful dodge or parry test against any character for a round. Contagious luck is amazing. For an entire round, every time when you fail a deck or a dodge or something else, you can reroll again with a 20% chance of success. Absolutely amazing talent, Contagious luck. So far, two very good talents. On a Voidborn, just a Flesh Wolf, the Voidborn character has a 20% chance to survive after suffering little damage surviving with one wound. Well, if you get burst in, if you get one shot, you're gonna survive for the next round. Again, amazing talent. Of course, there's a 20% chance to trigger this talent, so it won't work every time, but it could save your ass from time to time. Jinx, while a Voidborn character has more than 50% wounds, above 50% HP, all chances of all creatures, including enemies in a 3 cell radius, are increased by 10%. You are aiming to be nimble, mage-like character, and 3 cells around you is actually very close, you wanna stay far away from combat, so Jinx is good if you wanna play something like a battle mage, but what I said for the Voidborn to be squishy and nimble, this doesn't merge exactly as well as other talents. While a Voidborn character has less than 50% wounds, all chances of all creatures, including enemies in a 3 cell radius, are decreased by minus 10%. Now it profits, okay? When you are about to attack with above 50% HP, it's more or less whatever. But when they attack you on 50% and less, there is a better chance for you to survive. Solid talent. And the last talent would be Be Smart. Anytime an ability or talent uses the Fellowship bonus, a Voidborn character can instead use the Intelligence bonus if it's higher. Additionally, Voidborn characters can always upgrade Intelligence, even if their Arch type does not allow it. I'll to put it short. If you wanna play a mage-like nimble rogue trader that's a leader, okay? that has leadership, huge leadership, to assemble your team, to lead them and so on, now it's gonna scale with intelligence, okay? Basically, it's a great talent for a squishy, nimble mage. The next world would be Hive World. So what is the Hive World home world on your Rogue Trader? You are a main support in your team. You lead them by not dealing that much damage to enemies, but by buffing your allies and debuffing enemies. If you wanna play as a classic leader, Hive World should be the origin home world for the Rogue Trader. If you are into that type of stuff, I am personally, I love supports. The main feature would be strength in numbers for the Hive World. And the Hive World characters will gain fellowship, resolve, if there are three or more creatures, allies or enemies in a three cell radius. They enhance their stats when there's a lot of enemies and allies around them, to make it short. Yet, they suffer minus two penalty to resolve with no creatures around. When there's no one around you, then it's bad. You can't use your ultimate skills with resolve, okay? You need to be a support that's in the middle of battle non-stop, okay? Surrounded by allies. You rely upon agility and upon fellowship. The bigger the fellowship, the stronger your buffs and debuffs are. The stronger your allies around you. Okay, you rely on a fellowship for your main stat. And now we get talents. The first one will be camaraderie. High world characters can pass willpower resist tests using their fellowship value instead if the character fellowship is higher. Very good, especially in conversations. There's a lot of conversations in the game. Skill checks, okay? Where you're gonna need to use willpower to, to do something, to resist someone, okay? To resist influence of the void and so on, or of the demon, you know? In this case, you do not use willpower to roll, you use fellowship, and your fellowship is already huge enough because you picked to play as the high world, home world, origin, rogue trader. Good talent for conversations. The next one would be outnumber. If a high world character has melee superiority against the enemy, the effect is increased by plus 10. Now to make it short and how does it work, melee superiority, the more allies around you, and you play to be 
you know, a leader, support with allies around you. So the more allies around you, the stronger you are. Okay, that's the best without number. The more of you are in a three cell radius, when you move together, the stronger you all are, especially your main character. Now, what's the penalty? If there are more enemies than allies, then you receive a penalty. Okay, then you are weaker. There is that feature called uh, melee superiority. And when there is a large creature, okay, those that occupy four tiles, there need to be two or three allies around it to receive melee superiority. Those that occupy only one tile, you need only one ally more to gain melee superiority. I hope I made myself clear how melee superiority works. The next one would be weapon personalization. All ranged weapons dealing physical damage have plus one damage, plus one percent arm pen, and plus one rate of fire, and minus five to recoil. You are expected to play as a ranged character, okay, as a fellowship high world support rogue trader. Good passive, it gives good benefits. The next talent would be Helping Hand. If a High World character starts their turn adjusting to an ally character, that High World character gains plus two movement points. Solid, okay. When you allocate your allies, you allocate them in cover, close by your main Rogue Trader, and they're gonna receive movement points. Plus two. So they can cover more ground, basically. If a High World character ends their turn, close to allies, they all gain plus two movement points on their next turn. Even better, you end turn close to someone, everyone gets additional movement points for the next turn. Solid, supportive talent. And the last talent would be Fresh Start. High world characters gain 50% bonus to dodge against the first attack of opportunity every round. Well, if you intend to move and you need to move along with your allies towards enemies, okay, and to be surrounded by allies if you play as a high world, then you also need to dodge, and that means that you're gonna, you're often, very often you're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna trigger attacks of opportunity. This talent will make it a bit easier so they can actually miss you with attacks of opportunity. All in all, so far, full melee tanky rogue trader, mage-like rogue trader, high world full support rogue trader. And now it's the forge world. Let's see what it is. Forge world is a rogue trader with augmentations. Okay, plenty of augmentations that buff him up. He relies on being crazy tanky, but this time he doesn't rely on strength or agility. He relies on intelligence. So. It's like a battle mage, to be more precise. The higher your toughness here, the better your armor is. The higher your intelligence is, the more damage you will deal with crits. That's about it. Now let's check the talents for the Forge World Homeworld. The first one would be Pinnacle of Weaponry. First attack in combat with any plasma, melta or power weapon deals additional damage equal to a Forge World character intelligence. For the remainder of combat, the bonus damage decreases to intelligent bonus divided by 2. Let me translate this very fast. There are, in the game, there are plasma, melta and power weapons. Most of those weapons have huge AoE attack, it's, you know, uh, huge explosions attacks from afar, so it's ranged attacks. Some of them pass through enemies in straight lines, some of them are in cones, some of them are in circles, okay, and so on. The higher your intelligence is, and you rely on intelligence, the more pain you deal with that type of weapons, okay, chaotic weapons you can call them. In other words, this is a great talent, great passive. The next talent would be Fires of the Forge. Forge world characters gain toughness deflection against the burning effect and flame weapons. Yes, enemies can burn you a lot, enemies use flame weapons, and you can deflect those effects with additional toughness that you gain as a characteristic modifier. You are a tanky battle mage after all, yeah? Overall, good talent as well. The next one would be Steel of the Forge. While wearing heavy armor, Forge World characters will gain movement points, deflection, and no one can make you prone. Enemies 
are hilarious in this game as far as prone goes, okay? They can knock you out. A lot of enemies can knock you out. You cannot get knocked out with this passive. It's absolutely great. More or less for moving points in deflection, but cannot fall prone. It's a very good talent. The next one would be Persistence of the Forge. Forge world characters gain a stacking plus 10% bonus to hit chance and dodge reduction against any target they hit with a single target attack. So how does this work? I said you're using huge AoE weapons. Melta guns, plasma guns and so on. They deal cone damage, area of effect and so on. But this is for a single target. You have a attack that deals a single target damage, for example, on plasma. And the secondary attack is AoE. So you're gonna stack it up like two or three times you shoot, okay, for the single target and then you whack them with huge AoE. Because now you stacked, you have like two or three stacks with single target and your AoE will hurt even more. It's a good passive, but it takes like two rounds to accumulate. Successful critical hits from a single target attacks increases the hit chance and dodge reduction by 20%. If you crit with dealing damage to one target, it's gonna be even better. Okay, so you benefit no matter what happens. The only thing you need is to hit. The last talent would be Calculated Relations. Forge World characters can use Persuasion, Coercion and Commerce based on Intelligence instead of Fellowship. Nice for the main character, okay? You won't use Fellowship, you have high intelligence and now you're gonna have skill checks, okay? With Persuasion, Coercion and Commerce on Intelligence. You're gonna use Intelligence for the dice. Very good. Forge World Home World is actually also great so far all four look nice now let's go to the imperial world what's the imperial world this is like base of bases okay because when you click on imperial world and you go to next then you can straight up put 10 points into strength toughness agility intelligence but all around you can make an all-around character okay if you want to play as mage but you don't want to pick other cone worlds the safest bet is Imperial War. You want to play ranged or melee again. The safest bet is Imperial War. You don't need to think much. You just move with Imperial World and pick the attribute point that you like the most. If you're going to use Intelligence, you're going to pick Intelligence. If you're going to be tanky, you're going to pick Toughness. If you want to deal damage, you'll pick Strength and so on. Now let's see what are the talents for the Imperial World. Ready to serve. When Imperial World character is affected by an ally's non-damaging ability or affects an ally with such an ability, the resolve is increased by fellowship bonus for a round. Good for the support, for the leader class. The next talent would be better to die for the Emperor. While under 40% HP, Imperial World characters gain plus 10 bonus to all characteristics and plus 2 to resolve. Good, good talent, man. Very good talent. When it's rough, it's gonna mean a lot. You're a lot stronger when low on HP. Doing my part, talent. If no other character in the current party is from an Imperial world, the first use of any of the character's archetype abilities costs one action point less. So, if you use companions from other worlds, they should not be from Imperial World, it's just a background of companions, and if you're gonna use like five companions that are not from the Imperial World, your abilities will cost minus one action point. This is actually huge, but you need to strategize and you need to plan ahead for your companions. The next talent would be No No Heresy. Imperial World characters gain plus 10% critical hit chance and plus 10% armor against Xenos or demonic creatures. There's plenty of Xenos and demons in the game, so this is very useful. Their allies gain half the bonuses of No No Heresy. Extremely useful, okay? However, Imperial World characters, Lower Xenos and Lower Warp are always zero. You don't need Lower Xenos and Lower Warp on your main, okay? Your Navigator, or whether to say Cassia, or your Inquisitor, they're gonna use Lord Xenos and Lord Warp. So you don't need it on a main character. This is a penalty that's actually not a penalty. No No Heresy is great. And the last talent would be Stronger Together. All allies excluding Xenos in the current party gain plus 5 to the same characteristic as was chosen for humanity's finest. I'll put it short now. Imperial world is great 
for Rogue Trader that's going to be a full freaking support. Okay, a leader. Someone that's gonna buff allies, debuff enemies, because these talents merge the best with a support. You can play as any other class as well. Okay, you can play as a Psyker too, but these talents are great on the support. The last one would be the Fortress World, home world. Let's see what it is. What is the Fortress World? It's a classic soldier, the one with a weapon in its hand. It doesn't matter if it's a shotgun, a rifle or a sniper. This is ballistics, okay, ballistic rogue trader ballistic character or better to say this is the one that deals damage the first passive would be never stop shooting each time a fortress world character kills an enemy they gain plus 10 stacks of never stop shooting at the start of their turn there is a chance that the first attack this round will cost zero action points imagine shooting multiple times in a row without the cost of action points it's absolutely crazy and i guess it's gonna be mega crazy on level 40 and above when you can actually create a lot of stacks of never stop shooting once this effect triggers all the stacks are lost and you begin again again it's a great passive for a damage dealer a ranged shooter the first talent for the fortress world would be combat edict fortress world characters gain plus 70 ballistics perception and willpower while in combat yet while out of combat their intelligence fellowship and perception and willpower are decreased by minus seven again you are crazy good in combat you're bad at skill checks your companions will need to do most of the skill checks you're just there to deal damage as a fortress world home world rogue trader the next passive would be hail of steel each round fortress world characters gain a stacking plus one percent bonus to dodge against range attacks for each shot they made during this round so how many shots you made during a round and if you have a, for example a support he tells you play again you can shoot like six seven times in a row and you get a stacking bonus to dodge compared to how many times you shot at an enemy also, the burst attack grants an additional 10 stacks, so never stop shooting. And you're gonna use burst a lot, okay, when you play as a shooter. Hail of Steel is a great passive for the damage dealer. Familiar kickback. At the end of their turn, Fortress World characters gain stacks of never stop shooting equal to half the minimal damage of the most damaging ranged weapon they use this round. In other words, the higher minimum damage is on your weapon, the more stacks you get for never stop shooting and the bigger the chance that your shots will cost zero action points or better to say you can play multiple times that's what the talent is the next talent would be spare magazine fortress world characters first three load in combat cost zero action points extremely useful even though if you think it's silly then who wants to reload weapon in combat there are some fights that are very long crazy hard where you're gonna need to reload and reload costs action points with this talent first time when you want to reload it's zero action points it's extremely good reloading a weapon will grant an additional 10 stacks so never stop shooting no matter what you do with talents everything will gonna add towards the never stop shooting which is great because it costs potato action points to shoot and the final talent would be never stop believing when all stacks of never stop shooting should be lost they become willpower divided by two number of stacks instead additionally a fortress world character may upgrade a willpower characteristic even if their current archetypes do not allow it that's basically to have a better willpower okay willpower is extremely important in skill checks but during combat willpower can protect you from a lot of annoying things in the game a lot all of those irritating mages casting debuff spells on you will not work as intended you're gonna be mentally tougher okay so that's why the talent over here never stops believing gives you willpower if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe i thank to all of my patrons and all of the members on my youtube channel as always thank you all for your support and i'll be seeing you on the next one thanks for watching
you're ready for Warhammer 40k trailer as I am. The Emperor protects 